Hi everyone, now in the vise is well basically a ball of fluff, if you can see it's a ball of fluff. This ball of fluff has actually got a bit of nylon on it, uh, obviously I've been fishing the fly. Now recently I uh, uh, put up a video uh, fishing the river down and I was catching brown trout as well as some small sea trout and the nymph, I was getting asked what nymph is that Davy because I did, I did hold it up a couple of times. Now. Surprisingly enough, but this is the main nymph that I've actually hooked the small sea trout on. Any time I've actually, it was Friday was the first time I actually landed. The, uh, I kept losing them, they kept jumping off, uh, especially with the barbless hook. Because sea trout are a bit splashy and they jump about and 90% of the time they will jump off. So I was lucky enough I actually landed three, uh, as well as I got two or three good brown trout as well. But this is a nymph that's been I put on and a lot of people laugh at it. Uh, it's just a ball of fluff as I say, uh, there is a bit of thought in it I think, uh, it's just it's a rough fly but it's got, if you hold it up to the light there is, there is a teardrop shape in the fly but there's a lot of movement in the fly, a lot of fluff, there's CDC fibre and god knows what's in it, uh, a bit of dubbing and so on. So basically I was asked could I tie it, could I show it, so there you are, it's not going to win any prizes for looks but it's going to if you want to catch fish, this is a good wee pattern. Now, the hook I used uh, is a size 18. It's this one here, it's from Fooling Mill. It's a Jig Force, the black nickel. And it's a five, you can see it's a 5045. There's quite a few uh, this style of hook, so, but this is a, uh, it's basically a kind of heavy. It's, uh, it's got a nice size, it's a nice shape, uh, and I, I liked it so. Uh, really strong because it does have, you, with this style of hook you will hook the bottom a bit. Now, what I'm going to do is set that in there now. I mean the, the bead I'm using is the, these slotted tungsten beads. This is the size, it's a 2.4 millimeter. Now you can tie this fly to suit yourself. You can tie whatever uh, size and weight you want. It'll still work, but this is the size that I've been fishing. Now the slotted bead, you're best to put, uh, I usually put it on with a small hole obviously. First, if I can find it, there we are. Let's put it into the hook. Now the slot should sit, well I feel it should sit anyway, uh, in the underside, meaning with, so it's under the, uh, so you can't see it anyway. It sits better like that so the bead's sitting whole with the slot in the underside. It will want to move but what I'd try and do, what you do is you can put a wee bit of super glue, but I like to put some thread on so that it's got something to grip. Not too much, so you'll not get the bead round the bend. So what I do is I just put a wee touch of super glue into onto that thread there. And then slide it up. Now you want to make sure the slot's on the underside, so we should just check where it is. And it should sit. Just I will set it quite quick. Where is it? Just hold it for a second and it will sit fine. There we are. Then the rest of the fly is just basically trying to get a shape with the dubbing and materials. Now the thread I'm using is a uni thread AO and all I've done. So I'm just going to come down. I want to come round the bend a wee bit. I'm going to put a tail. If you haven't got, this is dyed olive CDC. This is a domestic duck. CDC uh, dyed olive. Now what I do is I actually use the tip for the tail and then I mix the cut ends, these, I cut these off, these fibres, into some dubbing and I'll show you the blend I use. Now once I've cut it off, obviously there's the, I've trimmed away the nice larger feather. I just use this as a tail. Throw nothing away. I, use a, I keep them for hackles and I keep them for for tails. So just tie it in, just give the impression of a tail. Trim that away. 
The rib of the fly is a small gold tinsel. I'm going to catch this on. This is just a proper tinsel, but you could use mylar if you want. Just come up and back down. Take the thread right up against the tail. Now the blend is the is the CDC fiber. I'll show you this. This is that CDC. This is all of CDC and a bit of fox squirrel uh, dubbing and a bit of UV light bright. This one here is from the, this is FNF FNF sorry uh, materials. This is what they call uh, just a UV simple as that. And I cut that in. And I've got the, th the three together and I just sit and blend it. There it's there. Just blend it together. Now, obviously some for the body first. Just slide it up. And then you want that wee bit of UV to, you don't want too much, but you want enough. Just form a taper in the body. I say there's not a lot to this fly. It's, it's a, just a wee olive nymph, but it does really, really well for me, right through the season. Uh, I'll usually put it on when, when do I, why would I do it? Things are quiet, it's a type of fly, it's got a lot of life in it. Uh, it's got nice colour, it suits most bugs, most nymphs. It's like a kind of hairs eerie type thing. Now, as you can see, I've got a taper there. Got some, a bit of flash. And as I say, it, it is rough like. Let's draw that back. And then you can either have the, you can have a darker thorax just using the, the rough, or you can. I like to mix a wee bit. I like this uh, sometimes itself, but I still grab a wee bit of dubbing, just a wee bit. So I've got legs. So there you go, and I'm going to lightly mix this together. And then. Oh, you want to lightly put it on, meaning, just to give you an idea, now I'm just going to slide this up. Now I've got no, I'm not, I don't even get any wax on this. Uh, you can get away with it, just lightly dub it on. And then take your fingers away and just spin. The wax would have helped, I should have put a wee drop on there, but I can get away with it. So I'm just building up the thorax a wee bit, keeping it loose. And take away the excess. I mean, it is seriously just a ball of fluff. Really heavy. Now I can thin that back a bit. So I'm just going to draw these fibers back. Get a wee bit of varnish onto my thread and then whip finish. So I just run the varnish along the thread. Just keeping the forward, just slightly forward of the eye, the beetle hold it, and then whip finish. That will seal your wet finish and you don't need to put varnish into it. And then I really brush it. I usually brush it towards the bead. And leave the body, or just the thorax area. You will bring out some of the dubbing. Some of the longer stuff. And then I just roll it back. Uh, I know it looks nothing. Uh, but I've had loads of fish in this pattern. You just look at the pattern, you think of the shape that you're looking for, you can trim some away or you can just, I'm just going to leave it. That's, that looks fine to me. There's one long flat bit of flash there, I'll take it off. Yeah, that's it. You did ask to see it. <laughs> that, uh, that is uh, the ball fluff. Uh, <coughs> I can all, I usually, well with a pattern like this, I have, I try and keep three or four in my box, but I go through them quite quick. Two, two main sizes, uh, is size 18s and 16s that I use, uh, that's a slightly larger size, uh, 18s, you could go smaller, uh, but when I'm fishing for the grayling, I find that type of size works extremely well, doesn't matter when I use it. Uh, and uh, it's just like one of these patterns you get confidence in but I want movement in the fly uh, when you hold this up to the light you'll see the shape of the body the, and the thorax the legs are there to move now you fish this up into the rough water there's plenty of life in that 
and uh, it can be anywhere in the cast as well. I fished it in the top, I fished it in the point, it will still catch anywhere. So it's a good nymph pattern. So anyway, there we are. That's uh, an olive boa fluff, boa fluff, if I can see it right. It's an olive boa fluff nymph. Uh, it's as simple as that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, thanks for watching.